Hello! This is my first casual video that I'm making, by which I mean it's not part of my cumulative case series, and I'm not animating it like usual. The idea behind videos like this is that I can produce more content more often, but it's different from my usual videos, so let me know what you think of this format. Anyways, with that out of the way, William Lane Craig's formulation and presentation of the Kalam is by far the most popular. It involves two parts. A short syllogism, which Craig usually puts on screen in his debates and stuff, and then a conceptual analysis of the universe's cause, which he usually just explains verbally. Now, this particular presentation has led some to mistakenly take the term, the Kalam, to refer to the syllogism only, rather than Craig's entire argument. This seems to be responsible for objections, like Matt Dillahunty's, that the Kalam isn't an argument for God's existence just some generic cause of the universe. This is an annoying objection, because it in no way actually objects to Craig's real argument, and it makes it look like the argument has some sort of flaw which isn't there. This problem, that the Kalam doesn't mention God, is a presentation problem, so to speak, rather than an actual philosophical or logical problem. It's a problem that comes from the way apologists have represented the argument. The reason I bring all this up is because I think the gap problem is really just a presentation problem as well. What is the gap problem? Well, various cosmological arguments, like the Kalam and the contingency arguments, usually have two stages. The first stage involves establishing the existence of a special kind of being, and the second stage involves showing that this being is God. The gap problem is essentially that even if you do an amazing job in the first stage, you still have a lot of work ahead of you because you need to get through the second stage as well before you have a real argument for theism rather than just some generic being. Now, why do I think this is a presentation problem? It's because a cosmological argument actually does act as evidence for the existence of God even if you only present the first stage. It would be a weaker argument for God, but it would still be evidence that he exists. In explaining why, I'll focus on the contingency argument. Most arguments for God's existence can be boiled down to, hey, this feature of reality is predicted by theism, and it's not predicted as well by alternative theories. Now, theism posits that there's a God who is, amongst other things, omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, and exists necessarily. So, strictly speaking, theism predicts that there is a necessary being, because if theism were true, the probability that there's a necessary being would be 100%. Now, the contingency argument establishes in the first stage that there's a necessary being. So, before you've even started getting into arguments that this necessary being is omnipotent or has a mind or whatever, you've already shown that theism has made a correct prediction. There is a necessary being. It doesn't matter that a necessary being is logically consistent with other worldviews. As long as the probability of a necessary being given these alternatives to theism, is less than 100%, the probability of theism will go up. Now, the more specific the prediction that your theory correctly makes, the more this verified prediction will raise the probability of your theory. And the probability of a necessary being with unlimited power is also 100% given theism. So, a given cosmological argument will be made stronger if it includes a second stage that establishes that this necessary being does indeed possess unlimited power. It will get even stronger if you establish that this necessary being has a mind, and so on. All that is great, but again, it's technically all optional. You just need the first stage. So instead of thinking of a successful stage 2 like a binary works or doesn't work, you should instead see it as more of a continuum. The strength of the argument goes up incrementally as the sort of being your argument proves is brought more and more into line with theism. Instead of the gap problem, I think a better name that avoids presentation problems might be the stack problem. The idea is, every time the theist argues the necessary being has an additional godlike property, the probability of theism goes up. So if their stage two needs some work, it's because the stack of godlike properties that they've established isn't big enough, and they need to work on that. This doesn't misleadingly imply that the argument is worthless until the theist has done this additional work. Anyways, I hope that this short video has given you a fresh perspective on cosmological arguments. 
That's the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.